What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for checking in again. We are continuing our Hail Caesar faction review series. Today we have what's called Pyric, or basically the list that will let you feature Pyrus of Epirus. Um, so uh, in some ways, you know, another Macedonian successor um, or Alexandrian uh, successor state here. Um, so basically late third century BC. So again, uh, if you don't know who Pyrus of Epirus was, you know, check it out. But um, other than that, uh, you know, check out Battle of Heraclea, uh, Asculum, and Beneventum, um, just for some starters there. So in many ways, um, lots of similarities to the Alexandrian lists that we've been seeing in some of these successors. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in other ways, uh, just missing a few things um, that the Alexandrian list had, or at least uh, overall quality. But um, it's still a pretty diverse list that lets you feel lots of different things and kind of, um, in some ways, is a, little, a little bit more of a, represents a little bit more progress from um, just the uh, original Alexandrian or Macedonian list. So let's jump in here. So infantry is again going to be the bulk of the army here, at least 50% other than skirmishers have to be infantry, and of that, pikes have to be 25% of that. So basically, uh, pike armed phalanx of one type or another. Uh, and then cavalry can make up the other 50% if you want. Uh, however, the list does let you field a little bit of artillery, although just the one unit. And interestingly, though, uh, you do still have access to elephants in this list, so 1 in 10 units can be elephants, so just keep that in mind. Um, divisions and skirmishers pretty straightforward there, so um, the usual uh, allotment there. So let's jump right into the infantry. So we have the phalangite heavy infantry with pikes. Uh, we've seen that many times, whether it was the uh, Alexandrian list or any of the successors. Uh, pretty standard uh, profile here. So phalangite heavy infantry with pikes um, comes standard with phalanx, of course, for 32 points a unit. Uh, we can make half of them veterans, which is great. Um, another three points and gives us drilled. Um, and again, this is all with that heavy infantry profile, so a four up morale save is going to be great. And then the sevens on clash and sustain as well. And then if we wanted to, um, as a bit of a discount, um, we can make them tarantines. Um, so uh, just a, uh, a downgrade in some ways here. So three... Uh, Minus three points, and then these can be levies. So um, interesting. I think it should be theoretically possible to make them veteran levies. Um, correct us. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, of course. But uh, just an interesting potential combination there. But anyway, a rock solid core of our infantry there. So then we get into all kinds of other flavors here. Um, so we have Greek, Italian, or Oscan hoplite heavy infantry uh, armed with long spears. So these guys do still get the phalanx rule, uh, but uh, key difference there: they do not have pikes. And just a Pretty standard unit here, basically the same as our uh, original phalangite uh, profile, but um, ultimately just a, a different name uh, there, but uh, represents potentially some uh, modeling opportunities for you there. Then we have Oscan Light Infantry with Spears and Javelins. Um, so typical Light Infantry profile, very good at short range and a little bit of a, a t-shirt save of six up there, but no other special rules and 20 points a pop. And then, interestingly, we do have access to basically a warband here. So the Galatian medium infantry with swords and javelins uh, gives us a nice nine on clash. But, of course, it's going to drop off and um, we're not going to be all that great on the defense. But it does give us access to wild fighters um, in potential quantity, depending on how big of a game we're playing and how many, uh, you know, as long as we're satisfying the, the phalanx uh, rule uh, and requirement, um, we're, we're pretty much good there. Uh, more Oscan uh, light infantry with uh, spears or javelins here. Um, and this one is an interesting one. I think they basically um, had a typo because it's literally the same profile um, across the board there. So I think that is just actually a typo. Um, yeah, there's really no difference there. So um, you can scratch that one off. Uh, then we get three flavors of skirmishers, basically. So uh, the typical profiles there. So we start off with our javelin small units at 11 points a pop, um, but also slingers here for 12 and bows uh, for 12 as well. And again, giving us access to range. And interestingly, and like a lot of other recent lists and things like that that we've seen, um, there's no real um, uh, limitations on how many of those. So some of the lists we've seen is you know, only half the skirmishers could be slings or bows here. We just, um, we can have whatever flavor of skirmisher we want and in whatever quantity we want, which is really great because having access to some long range uh, firepower is definitely a good thing there. And interestingly, we could, Again, without restriction, that's the interesting part there, uh, without restriction, upgrade the bowmen to Cretans. Usually we've seen that as like a one of in a lot of lists, but here, basically, so for 13 points pop, we have long range on bows and marksmen, um, which, you know, if you wanted all your skirmishers to basically be Cretan archers, you could, and that's actually pretty nasty. So um, then 
we have a very solid uh, cavalry component to the army here and certainly would recommend um, keeping that in mind. Um, you're really doing yourself a disservice if you go all infantry um, with this list here. So we have Epirote um, or Macedonian medium cavalry with spears or javelins. Um, so starting off there with that typical medium profile and for 33 points we actually get drilled and elite. Um, so that's already a solid cut above basically all other medium cavalry there. And then if we wanted to, for three extra points, we make them heavy, which basically just ups the damage profile a little bit and does take us down to a four up, or sorry, it increases us, although it's uh, a lower number, um, uh, but taking us basically to the uh, the four up morale save. So excellent, excellent cavalry right there. Um, but wait, there's more. Um, we have another medium cavalry uh, here, and that's the Thessalian or Greek medium cavalry uh, with spears or javelins. Again, just Typical profile, not quite as good as the Epirote or Macedonian ones above, but still drilled and a little bit cheaper. So, you know, you have that. And then you have Oscan medium cavalry with spears and or javelins as well. These guys are also um, um, really good and uh, cut above the regular medium. So whereas the allied Greek ones are drilled, these guys are not drilled, but they're elite. Um, so uh, an interesting um, selection there. And then we could also upgrade those into heavy cavalry so we could have more elite heavy cavalry. So there's just a... Um, uh, just a, a wealth of cavalry options here. So really, um, you have access to fantastic infantry. Uh, we with all our reviews now. You know, you know by now if you've been following that right, what um, all these phalangites basically can do, and some of the other warband options here. Again, you have access to fantastic skirmishers, and then really um, awesome cavalry, and in some ways uh, certainly uh, potentially superior to the original Alexandrian Macedonian lists. So. Um, that is quite a bit there, but we are not done yet. So moving on, um, we have light cavalry, uh, with javelins as small units and we could, um, the, you know, no special, um, bonuses or anything there. Typical light cavalry unit, uh, they'll do their work against, um, things like skirmishers and other, uh, typical small weak flanking units. We could upgrade them to Tarantines, which does not change any of their profiles, um, but for two more points basically gives us feign flight again in quantity. Uh, just another um, fantastic opportunity there. And then, uh, lest we forget, we do still have access to elephants on top of all that if we really wanted to field them. So for 23 points, a pop there. And then we do get access, and you know, considering it's just the one unit, you might as well take it just to add even more um, uh, excellent long-range firepower. So one medium artillery bolt thrower unit for 20 points. And um, everything is basically leadership eight here. And much like the Alexandrian list, you know, essentially if you wanted to play this as if uh, Pyrus was uh, leading the army himself. So for 29, or sorry, 25 points, we can upgrade the whole thing to Leadership 9, which makes this a very, very scary customer. Uh, this, this whole list uh, indeed is uh, quite scary. So this is as good, um, if not better in many ways, than the Alexandrian list. And really, if you can um, play it pretty smart and uh, avoid some of the mistakes of the historical Pyrus, um, as opposed, you know, instead of losing such a big chunk of your army, leading to pirate victories, um, this uh, is, is a nasty list uh, indeed. So again, you have access to tons and tons of special rules um, and excellent infantry of all levels, um, uh, heavy, medium, and light. Uh, skirmishers are fantastic. Fantastic cavalry as well. Um, uh, you know, just access to uh, just a, the bulk of your cavalry being elite potentially and potentially drilled as well, uh, just phenomenal. Throw in some elephants and a little bit of artillery as well, and you just you can do everything with this list. So, and you know if you uh, pay the extra points just to get leadership nine for your general, like you're going to be able to be much more aggressive um, in some of your orders and get more things happening, more things moving. Uh, but that being said, drilled will um, also be there as a backup for you just in case some of those orders go south. But nonetheless, a fantastic list, guys. Let us know in the comments if you've played the Pyrrhic list, um, your experiences there, what kind of opponents have you faced, uh, successes and failures, or if you played against this uh, list, well, you know what scares you, what have you been able to do, have you been able to beat it? Um, let us know, guys. Uh, leave us a like and subscribe as well. And if you guys could, um, if you ever head over to Warlord um, uh, and pick anything up there, if you guys need anything, uh, Follow the link in the description uh, below. That does help support the channel if you guys pick anything up there. Um, so another way for you guys to show some support. Um, and we look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for stopping by again, guys. Take care.